What's going on, Jeff Manchester, Manchester Music. Welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about the SM7B and this microphone, the AT2020 USB-I. This mic has been with me forever. I have had this mic follow me, you know, country to country, job to job. Um, it's been on instruments, vocals, everything for me. So why would I switch? Why would I, why would I leave? Why would I leave an incredible relationship? It's a great question. Before I jump into the SM7B review, talk through whatever, um, let's talk about what why I'm leaving this guy. Uh, the, one of the first reasons is I don't want to use a, a, a pop filter anymore. I just feel like mic technology has reached a point now where we shouldn't have to use stuff and be at a certain distance. I just want to get really close and get that proximity effect and get in there, get that NPR voice, which I already kind of have, and that's what I want to lean into. So I don't want a pop filter anymore. I don't want a pop shield. I don't want to monitor how close or how far I am. I just want to that's all I want. I just want to get really close to a microphone and not worry about that stuff. The other thing about the AT2020 is that this guy is super bright. This is AT. AT is a Japanese company, more or less. And that market loves a bright, crisp, rich vocal. It's just the way it is. That's why this guy is very sharp and kind of bright right off the bat. Very modern sound to it, which is okay. But as I get older, I appreciate in my masters, my music, everything, a more delicate, balanced, uh, rich uh, smooth tone as opposed to something bright like this because when you get a bright sound uh, especially with a, a close proximity vocal microphone there's more post-production processing you got to do some more de-essing to get rid of the strongly stressed consonants like s and t um you have to do yeah just more kind of stuff on, on on the back end to get rid of the sound or to get rid of the stuff that was brought up and and, and highlighted and elevated when you're recording the other thing that about this this at 2020 is that I never felt like I could get away with post-production. By this, I mean I had to do a lot of uh, de-essing, uh, deplosive work, and denoising. Once I got past that, I always felt like the the results suffered a lot. So I wanted to change. So what do you need to know about this microphone? First of all, um, this is a dynamic microphone. It can handle higher SPL levels. It does require a little bit more power um, and juice to turn on and to get to a, a certain level. Um, so, you, you know, put it through a preamp, buy a cloud lifter, which I did. That'll bring the signal up 20, 25 plus uh, dB of just pure clean gain before you get signal. Not before you get signal, but just so you don't have to crank the preamp up too much. Um, so it's very rugged as well. It has a smooth kind of flat, if you will, frequency response, which is awesome coming from this super bright Japan land microphone. Um, the other thing is it has kind of switches at the back, which will uh, do a bit of a roll off on the low end. So a high pass filter. It also has a presence boost. Booster. You can boost the mids. Very easy to use. Uh, screwable, I don't know, nut chassis. I have no idea. Um, basically, you don't have to like put the mic in and then twist it around over and over and over till it locks. You've got this thing where you can just twist the bolt or nut or washer. I don't know. I haven't done an honest day's work with my hands in my life. But you just twist it in and it acts like a shock mount and you can move it around. We'll do that right now. It's really awesome. It's just really, really great experience using this microphone on that level. Uh, so it's super rugged. It has two windscreens, the one that you're seeing right now. Um, this is not the one that everyone uses. The one that Joe Rogan uses to talk about DMT is a different one, uh, but it actually comes with two. It comes with this one and the other one, and this one is great for close proximity um, a voiceover work when you want to get really close, get your lips on the mic. Um, and I think this one's awesome. This one's way better than the other one that it comes with, which is more suited for instruments and stuff. You can take this off. And there we go. I've revealed uh, the kind of grill and capsule and stuff like that. Or I'm going to put it back on and put it back on. So that's what it looks like when it's off. The other thing that this microphone is known for is great shielding. So I don't know if this is a common mode rejection thing or whatever, but it's kind of built and uh, designed to reject noise and hum and all the rest of it. I think this is because uh, Sure knows that people are going to be putting uh, this mic around other mics and other cables and other stuff and wires and all that stuff might cause some ground loops, hum, hiss, buzz. So it's known, it has a reputation for, for being very uh, well guarded against those things. Uh, what else? I have a little sheet here so I don't go off track. The other thing is that it, like, it has a solid reputation. This is the mic that you see used a lot, uh, you know, when they do podcasts, but they'll go behind the scenes and you'll see what they're actually using um, in other broadcast applications. I say this one the, and the, the RE20 is the one that gets used a lot, um, but you see this one all over the place. And that's never a reason to buy it, by the way, ever, ever, ever. Don't ever think that just because you see something everywhere that it it's what you need. It's like trying on shoes. Bring them into your space. Put them on. Do they work? Do they not work? Try something else and then go for the thing that actually fits you. Just because everyone's using it doesn't mean it's going to work for you. This microphone has all those things 
And what has my experience been using this microphone? It's a great question. I'm going to talk about it right now. The first thing, the minute I plugged this microphone in, oh my gosh, um, <laughs> I got your classic ground loop hum. I got that or hiss or buzz. It was not coming from this room. I know this room so well. It was just this kind of fizziness, this electrical noise, not really sure. So what I did was all the things you should do, and that's unplug, plug, move the power source, um, you know, check to see if it's the microphone, if it's the XLR cable, if it's the cloud lifter, check to see what it is that's, that's contributing to that noise. And then do the best you can to, to kind of tick off all the boxes. Is it the mic? Is it the cables? Is it the power source? Is it the room? Is it, what is it? So anyway, um, I eventually moved the power source because it's going into an Apollo 8 quad. I moved the Apollo's power um, instead of where everything's going behind me were all the other wires and, and monitors and lights and all that stuff. They're all feeding into that power. I moved it to its own power source over here where nothing else is going into that jack. And that immediately solved the problem. So ground loop pump gone. Also move the cloud lifter if you buy one of these guys somewhere outside of the range of the preamp. That could be causing the problem as well. Go on the forums, ask people, Reddit. Everyone's really helpful. So anyway, that solved that problem. But what I did notice with this mic is that it is way louder than I thought it would be. And by loud, I mean white noise, not room noise, perhaps self noise. I don't know, but I don't get the same self noise from this guy. To illustrate, I have recorded two samples in RX. We're going to go back and forth, me talking into this one. Listen for the characteristics of the mic, the, that kind of smoothness coming from this guy and the brightness coming from this guy. But listen more importantly to the noise, the kind of hiss, the white noise coming from both microphones. Um, just so you know, when I recorded, I had this guy cranked all the way up. There's no numbers here, so I just cranked the, I guess, the, the input loudness all the way up. Uh, so I was hitting minus 12, minus 14 dBFS. Same thing with this guy, except I had about 35 dB of gain on the preamp with the cloud lifter. Um, and I was hitting around the same, minus 12, minus 14 dBFS on both microphones, talking into them at the same time. And listen for the differences in, in tonal kind of characteristics, but also in noise and level. And let me see, well, let's see what you hear. Check one, two. Talking to the SM7B right now. I am uh, going to the cloud lifter and then out of the cloud lifter and 37 or 38 dB of gain coming from the preamp from the Apollo 8. So this is the SM7B and I'm going to be quiet right now so you can hear the noise coming out of this mic. That's the noise. Okay, so this is the AT2020 USB-I, and I'm holding it about as far as the capsule of the SM7B is uh, from my mouth. They're side by side, although I'm facing, or I'm tilting the AT2020 USB-I mic a little bit closer to my uh, my voice because the capsule from the SM7B is pointed there. But this is the AT mic, Audio-Technica, uh, all the way up on the gain on the front and I'm going to stop talking so you can hear its noise and I'm looks like I'm going a little bit louder than I was on the SM7B so I might turn this one down a little bit so they're gain matched and you can really hear the noise from both so here's just the noise so that is just the noise So what I hear with the Shure SM7B is a kind of, uh, yeah, kind of accentuation of white noise, especially around like 3K and upwards, where our ears are super sensitive to that stuff. With this guy, I don't hear that same accentuation of white noise in that frequency range. I do hear some hum and some, not some hum, but some kind of low tones, which is like, that's this room. Like This is not an anechoic chamber. That Every room is going to have a sound, and this room certainly has one. But I didn't hear the same kind of... Um, bright, uh, fizzy white noise coming from this microphone as I did with this microphone. And I tried to do a nice gain match comparison and everything. The reason I'm stressing this is because this mic on the forums, everywhere else is known. Well, some people have said that it is like, hear a pin drop quiet. I don't think that's true. So I was really bugged and perturbed about this. I actually took this mic, the cables, the cloud lifter, everything because I thought I was going crazy and my expectations were really high. I took this to Long and McQuaid, Toronto Musical Instruments Store, and I didn't buy it from them, but they were super cool. Shout out to Long and McQuaid. And they actually tested this against the rental SM7B they have. They tested the cables. They tested the mic. They tested everything else. And they're like, there is no problem with this microphone at all. Um, 
you know, so it's not the mics, not the cables, not the cloud lifter. This is just a louder than I expected microphone. But I just wanted to test everything before I went on camera and did a review review. Let's get to the actual review. What do I think about this microphone? Here are the pros. Number one, rugged, incredible build quality. I love the chassis. I love the shock mount for this guy. It's so easy to use. Screw in, fix in. You're good to go. That is wonderful. I love the smooth frequency response. I love the kind of rich, balanced sound that I get from this mic as opposed to this one. I think I said earlier at the top of the video that as I get older, I prefer the sound of a nice balanced mix, master, and microphone. I like that so that I can bring stuff up afterwards if I need to. Really like that about that. I love that this guy can handle close proximity applications without having to use a pop shield, without, frankly, having to deal with sibilance. This guy is just really suited to voiceover stuff. I found that I've had to do very little work. I've already done a couple of tutorials for Isotope, which are forthcoming. I've done on this microphone, and it sounds wonderful from a post-production standpoint. Not much to do. Nice, rich, smooth, balanced sound coming from this mic, and I really appreciate that. It's a whole other world coming from this guy. I like the cost of this microphone. I think it's well-priced for what you get. Um, a solid, dynamic, reliable, kind of industry standard microphone. I think it's really well-priced, really competitively priced, so it's nice to get which you pay for. Now the cons. I think this microphone is louder than I expected. That not That's not necessarily Shure's fault. Um, it's the kind of reputation and the narrative that forms around this stuff. I just expected it to be much quieter, certainly much quieter than this guy. And the reason I think they're louder and all that stuff is because um, this guy has a very direct path into your ears, right? It's just a USB cable that goes into your iPad, your phone, your computer dock and that's it whereas this guy has some more intricate piping to go through it has to go into a cable into a cloud lifter out uh, to another cable into a preamp and then that brings a gain up and you know there's more stuff that can happen along the way overall I think this guy has a just overall noisier level of noise than this guy and that's not something I expected it's okay um, this room is pretty well treated I know how to use RX pretty good uh, so I can get rid of the noise, but I just expected a much quieter experience, and it could just be that I, I was just a prisoner of my own hype when it came to this microphone on a noise level going through the forums and everything else. The other thing is that, the other con rather, is that this microphone does require, I think if you want to use it properly and get the most out of it, it requires a cloud lifter. You don't have to use a cloud lifter. You could use other stuff. There's other competitors out there, but the cloud lifter is helpful for bringing up the overall body of the input signal to a point where you don't have to crank the preamp too much and get the preamp noise and hiss and whatever's going on with your preamp if it's not clean. The kind of crummy thing about that is that the cloud lifter is like 200 bucks, which is almost half the price of the microphone. So coming from this USB world, it's pretty jarring to go from one cable into a thing into two cables, a cloud lifter into a preamp. Maybe you don't have a preamp. Uh, so you have to buy that as well if you want this kind of industry standard broadcast mic. And that's what I'm kind of getting at with this review. I really love what I got. I think this is a great microphone. It's going to follow me, you know, for the next couple of tutorials and I'm going to keep using it, but you need to know what you're getting into when you buy this mic. You need to do your homework because it might be kind of scary when you realize that you'll need a preamp or a mixer, uh, probably a cloud lifter, a couple of XLR cables, maybe a broadcast arm, whereas this guy is just plug and play. It's very 21st century. But you get what you pay for. This microphone I'm very impressed with, I'm very happy with, I'm going to keep using. Um, this one I will probably keep using too, but it has differences with this microphone. Is it better or worse? I don't know. It's just different. That's what it is in audio. Nothing is better or worse. Things are just different. And they have different applications and they work in different contexts to tackle different tasks. I think this microphone, for what I'm doing, is excellent. And it was certainly a learning process for me. I felt like I was back at audio engineering school trying to like solve for problems and make sure that you know it wasn't coming from a cable or pre or whatever. So that was interesting. Um, and your journey might be just as interesting if you buy one of these mics. But bottom line, going forward, this is going to be the sound of the channel. It's going to be the sound of the tutorials on Isotope. And um, I also want to try other stuff. Now that I have the kind of infrastructure for uh, XLR kind of stuff with mics, I'm going to rent some more mics. Maybe just when something comes out, I'll go to Long McQuaid, rent it, bring it back, do a review. Is there something you want to see a review on, a microphone out there, something you want to know about? Let me know in the comments. We'll leave some end cards. Um, I'm looking forward to doing more reviews of hardware like this and maybe some monitors, maybe, in the future. Uh, let me know what you want to see. Do you like this mic? Do you have this mic? Do you have this mic? What are your thoughts? I want to know. Take care.